Faith with Heather Murdoch. And we are back with Love, Hope, and Faith. I'm Heather Murdoch interviewing today Stephanie Sherwood from the Tapestry, founder of the Tapestry Network, and uh, you're telling your story today. So when we went to break, you were talking about how you kept a $30,000 secret from your husband. Yes. <laughs> that's not a pair of shoes. No, that's not a pair of shoes. Um, so yes, I in uh, my transition of the economy going bad and um, I would do a show, uh, SMUD, and uh, I would do seven or $8,000 in a day. Yeah. Well, it takes a lot of inventory and a lot of product to do a seven or $8,000 day. And so, you know, did it last year, things are great. I'd come back and the whole um, kind of purse part, and I wasn't a traditional purse party because I was the buyer. I did all of my own buying, all of my own sourcing, but that whole idea was no longer I guess hip for lack yeah. of a better word. Yeah. Yeah. And there were other things that had come onto market that, you know, people, you, there's only so many expendable dollars and people right. were making choices to spend their money other places. Uh, needs versus wants. Or sometimes wants, just their wants were somewhere else. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it was so having to, I, I should have closed the business about a year, at least a year sooner than I did, but I held on to it and I held on to it and I held on to it. And it takes a lot of, you know, it's a retail without the brick and mortar, and it takes a yeah. lot of money uh, to keep a retail establishment open, and and because you have to have new product, yeah, because otherwise your your cons the consumer goes away; they'll go find it somewhere else. And I had uh, didn't realize I had hit my rock bottom in this season of my life, and keeping that well, keeping any secret is exhausting. But keeping that size of a secret and so a secret around something that was so important to my husband mm -hmm. um, was just, it was really, it was devastating me. It was. And, and I'm sorry, just to kind of touch more on that. What, yeah, what did it feel like to keep that secret? I mean, I know it's exhausting, but what else? What else? How did it affect your relationship with your husband? Well, obviously, if I'm keeping a secret there, yeah. uh, you know, it, it just the whole intimacy, the communication. Yeah. Um, because if I say too much, I might slip up. Something might happen. Yeah. I might say something I shouldn't be saying. Mm -hmm. So it just affected every area of our life. Um, and it also affected because I was pulling back. And I, and I, I, there was there was anger, but it was around myself and just kind of that disappointment, like oh I failed, and yeah. what is he going to think? And so that rolled off to our kids, and yeah, absolutely. it's it, it you can't keep a secret. It affects the whole family. Yeah, you can't keep a secret and think that it's only going to affect you. That's right. Um, it's because it's a negative energy that you're you're holding, mm -hmm. and it can make you sick. It 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 surely yeah. can. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and and so it's just having that faith, again, not walking out my faith with God mm -hmm. and not really trusting him to be able to take care of it. Because right. we can only see what we can see. Right. And we often live in our flesh. Mm -hmm. And so I was, um, on the break, I was telling you that I didn't want to get away from my debt. I wanted to be responsible for it, but I didn't quite know how to do that. And so in my, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'd been a, a part of a lot of class action lawsuits with Macy's. And I'm like, Oh, wouldn't it just be awesome if a, you know, a big chunk of money came in from Macy's that I'm not expecting? Yeah. Or wouldn't it be great? Abracadabra. If, yeah. <laughs> just or fix it. What yeah. if I told my story to just the right person and it pulled on their heartstrings and they would give me a loan so I could pay off the debt and yeah. my husband would never have to know about it? So I'm praying for rationalizing. Yes, and, rationalizing. Yeah. And I'm praying for deliverance mm -hmm. this whole time. I'm praying for it to go away. And that's why I said sometimes you have to be careful what you pray for yeah. because what we think in the flesh doesn't have the internal impact that God needs it to have. Mm -hmm. And so I was, um, prior to starting uh, the Tapestry Network, I was working for another organization similar to what I do, but it is for a secular audience. And I was away in Dallas on my conference, and I did one of the worst things I've, I've ever done as a parent. I asked my daughter to intercept the mail. Wow, Stephanie. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was intercepted, mm -hmm. and then it was intercepted by my husband. Wow, my goodness. So, you know, here's my, gosh, I don't even know how, she's, you know, a tween. She's maybe 12 or 13, and she's going up to the mailbox, and she's getting the mail, and I guess if I had really thought it out, I would have told her to hide it, but I just, like, go put it on my desk, and it, you yeah. know, daddy won't notice, and don't pay, don't worry about it. Well, on Friday night, my husband found the mail, and uh, was not mad at Jordan, because there was, he couldn't yeah. be mad at course, her, yeah. opened it up, and found my secret. 
and I was in leadership with this other organization. I got the phone call on a Friday night, and I was just expecting him. I just expected it to be our Friday night check-in, and I never knew that a human could speak so many words without taking a breath. Mm -hmm. And I'm in an atrium hotel in Dallas, and I'm walking around on the 14th floor. I mean, I really literally feel like I'm in hell. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's that hot. I can't breathe. I, I, just mm -hmm. every ounce of who I am is just melting inside. Every worst fear coming true. Every worst fear yeah. coming true. And so he did what he had to do, and he hung up, and I you know, went back to my room and had to get dressed because I had to show up. and do what I needed to do and the next morning and it was really weird because that particular conference God was delivering me mm -hmm. and he was taking care of the debt Amen. but in a very different way mm -hmm. and in a way that if I had been smart enough I would have wanted it to be just the way it was mm -hmm. but I'm not and he's God and he knows yeah, best. Yeah exactly. But it was an odd conference that year because almost everybody from the main stage, and these are powerful businesswomen, was talking about their faith. Mm -hmm. mm, God speaking. God speaking. Uh -huh. And then on that particular Saturday, um, I went and saw a man. His name's Brian Dodge. He was one of the breakout speakers. And, I mean, everything he said just resonated. And I cried through his entire 90-minute presentation. And that is, I think, when I actually hit the bottom and started coming back up. And it was in that release and that surrender, and it was reaching out to God and saying, okay, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I cannot do this on my own. Yeah. I obviously have tried and look where it's gotten me. I don't wanna be in this place anymore. So I took the afternoon off, went out and wrote this long note. He had, as he's, he's a very smart businessman, and he was basically like, write me a little, he called it his legacy list, write me what you're willing what you want and what you're willing to give up to get what you want. And I tell the story all the time. He's from Texas. He's got a southern drawl. He's very funny. And he says, you know, now, ladies, if your business isn't where your business needs to be, lunch at the country club with Muffy and Buffy every Tuesday and <laughs> Thursday may have to be something that you give up. That's right. Not always, but maybe for, you know, right now. And I just so took that to heart. And so I wrote my list, and on, I, I can't, I remembered the, only the three things that were important. Fix my relationship with God, get plugged back into church, and fix my marriage. And as mm -hmm. I said earlier, we just celebrated our 27th wedding yes. anniversary. Yeah. Um, I'm sitting here on your show, so obviously I'm You're connected. I'm connected. <laughs> um, and when I went back, he, I, so I wrote this list, and I brought it, brought it back to him, and I had also purchased his book. And I said, Mr., you know, waited in line. He's a, t he's a radio host, and he was um, broadcasting live that afternoon. And so we all stood in line to, you know, have him sign our books. And, you know, Mr. Dodge, would you sign my book? And he said, no. And I went, and mind you, I've been crying for hours. And I'm like, really? I know I'm, my eyes are swollen, <laughs> my, tear, my nose is red, but really you're not going to sign my book? And I just was devastated. And he said, I'm not going to sign your book because I don't want anything to prevent it prevent you from giving it to the person who really needs the book. Mm. I gave it to somebody and her life was forever changed. Amen. Amen. Um, and then I, and he said, there is something really incredibly special about you and you are going to do great things. Mm. And I'm like, okay, now he must be talking to this gal because right. can he, I am, I am. Well, hot mess. I'm a, I'm a big, <laughs> hot, broken mess. <laughs> and he said, he gave me a hug and he's like, stay in stay in contact with me. I'm like, all right, whatever. And as soon as I left his embrace, he's also a Christian, um, I had this oh, pulling on my heartstring, and I knew it was God, and he was calling me. And I went, and I really struggled with that for about three days, and I finally said, nope, nope. I'm too broken. Not worthy. I'm not worthy. Yeah. You can't use me. There's like, thank you, but basically no thank you. So I get home from Dallas, get plugged into church, have some very needed conversation with my husband. And it's not even just about the money. It's about who we are Ooh, yeah. in, a, in a marriage. and a trail, yes. marriage, whatever, all that. And, yeah. and just, you know, being a partner. Like, yeah. what does it look like to be a partner? We both come from, I mean, there's no family that doesn't have some form of dysfunction. Absolutely. And so we both come from you know, our own stuff, and he's an only child, and um, his, his dad was an alcoholic, and, and so he had a lot of trauma in a lot of ways mm -hmm. that, you know, he wasn't 
raised, I mean, his parents loved him tremendously. Yes. You know, that was never the question. But you do the best that you, you can as a parent. Yeah. And, and sometimes you only know what you know. And sometimes in our, in our brokenness, we break our kids. Yes, yeah, very so. true. Mm -hmm. And so in that, um, uh, that was where I was like, okay. And so things started to get better. Got plugged into church and was like, oh, you know, rediscovering mm -hmm. Christ, rediscovering God, rediscovering what it meant to be in a body of believers. But again, as I said, I had that little bit of a frustration. I belonged to a mega church, and we were at Tuesday night Bible study. It was about 1,200 women. Wow. And, uh, you know, 98% of us were in the marketplace in some flavor, mm -hmm. um, employees, employers type of a thing, and yet we didn't talk about business. Mm -hmm. And I understand that's not the point of Bible study, but yet we could talk about a relationship problem, a health problem, and if we're in the marketplace then we're struggling with things, and yeah. we need a place to be able to talk exactly. about them. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. You have one minute left. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, I, I hear, I, yeah. I see. <laughs> You're good. And so in that process, um, I had gone to a networking event, you know, outside of Bible study, and met this woman who said almost identically what this man in Texas had said. Mm -hmm. And there was just this instant admiration and respect for both of these people. So I'm driving home from Auburn that night. I live in Rockland. And I'm like, okay, God, I don't see yet what you see, but I trust you. I'm, like, I'm literally like this in the car. Yeah. I mean, just like I've lit, I've, I, so much be light is beaming from me. Yeah. I know I'm lighting up the freeway. I don't see what these people see, but I trust you. I'm all in. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that's going to look like. I have no idea where you're going to lead me, but I'm all in. And I get home. Um, and I say to my husband, I have something to tell you. Now, mind you, you know our history. Mm -hmm. So his gut reaction is like, what did you do now? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, just hear me out and just promise me that you're going to listen to me. He's like, okay. I'm like, well, I was having this conversation with Jesus, and I told him that I'm all in, and so I don't know what that looks like. But when I tell you I need your support, I need your support. And he said, okay. Wow. Well. Second chances. God has a God of second chances. Yes. And he goes, <clears throat> are you going to Africa? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I mean, if that's where God calls me, I'm going to have to go. But I really don't think so. But just promise me when I tell you I need your support, will you support me? Mm -hmm. And he said yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I love that. Okay, on that note, we're going to yes. take a quick break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for the final segment.